Hi guys, this is a video on polycystic kidney disease. So polycystic kidney disease or PKD is a congenital condition where the kidneys are filled with hundreds of fluid filled sacs known as cysts that cause the kidneys to be larger than normal. The cysts can develop in both the outer cortex and also medulla of both kidneys and are normally lined with tubular epithelium. They fill up with more and more fluid over time and could result in renal failure due to chronic renal insufficiency. There are, main, there are two main types to the disease, autosomal dominant PKD or autosomal recessive PKD. So starting off with ADPKD, in the autosomal dominant type, the symptoms typically don't present until in adulthood and the patient can be asymptomatic until the fourth decade of life. Typically, there is a feeling of flank pain or a heavy dragging sensation due to damage the renal architecture, due to um, acute distension of a cyst by intracystic hemorrhage or by obstruction that can cause excruciating pain. There may be renal colic, intermittent gross hematuria and less commonly headaches. The pathophysiology of ADPKD is um, a heterozygous mutation in either the PKD1 or the PKD2 gene. If the mutation is in PKD1, it's usually more severe with an earlier onset of the disease and the opposite is true for PKD2 gene mutations. This happens because the PKD genes code for proteins polycystin 1 and polycystin 2, which are found on the primary cilium that's actually an appendage on most cells of the body. So what they do is that they're actually mechanosensitive and in the nephron the flow of urine causes the primary cilium to bend, which causes a calcium influx that inhibits cell proliferation through certain intracellular pathways that we won't go into here. Therefore, if there's a mutation in the PKD1 and PKD2 gene, there's going to be a lack of inhibition of cell proliferation, therefore resulting in cyst formation, as well as actually stimulating the expression of proteins that transport water into cysts, which is why they're fluid filled. So, if it's a single heterozygous mutation, that means one functional copy of the gene is left behind, but a second random mutation in the remaining copy is almost guaranteed in ADPKD, which is why the, the, the expression of polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 is absent. So although the inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant, cellularly expressed in uh, a recessive manner. So this is a diagram that's just summarising what I said earlier. So the complications of ADBKD is the formation of cysts elsewhere in the body because polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 are proteins that are expressed in other places as well. So typically benign cysts could occur in the liver, in the seminal vesicles, in the pancreas, and also in the vasculature throughout the body. So it could cause aortic root dilatation that could result in aortic regurgitation and cause heart failure. The cyst could occur in the circle of Willis where a berry aneurysm might be formed and rupture of this will result in a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And this can also result in mitral valve prolapse which is where the leaflet of the mitral valve goes back into the left atrium during systole. Other complications of ADPKD include hypertension, and this is caused by the activation of the RAS system because the cysts could compress on the capillaries that supply the nephrons and cause ischemia. Whereas, um, apart from hypertension, kidney stones might be another complication due to urinary stasis that's caused by compression of the collecting duct by the cyst so the urine can no longer be drained and eventually renal failure might occur due to the chronic insufficiency of the kidneys. 
So moving on, ARPKD is the recessive uh, form of the condition and for this disease it typically presents in infancy. So because um, in ARPKD renal failure or hepatic failure might occur before birth, serious manifestations and symptoms of both renal failure or hepatic failure could um, be present at birth and those symptoms will be the symptoms uh, you can notice at presentation. So the pathophysiology of ARPKD is obviously autosomal recessive, meaning that there's going to be a mu mutation in both copies of the PKHD1 gene. So this gene codes for another protein called fibrocystin that co-localizes with polycystin 2 on the primary cilium and the exact mechanisms aren't clear but it's believed that it could be involved in the same calcium signaling pathway as mentioned earlier so the cyst formation might have a similar mechanism as ADPKD sorry this should say ADPKD um, in ARPKD renal failure could occur before birth because this could happen whilst the baby is uh, in utero so Obviously, if the kidneys are not working properly, the fetus cannot pass the urine. So there's going to be a, a consequence of events that happen as a result. So starting off with renal failure caused by the cysts, this is going to prevent or reduce the amount of fetal urine formed because the baby swallows amniotic fluid that gets excreted as fetal urine. Because there's less fetal urine, there's going to be um, a condition called oligohydramnios, which means low amniotic fluid. And if there's less amniotic fluid, the uterine walls could actually compress on the fetus because there isn't the cushioning from the amniotic fluid. So that compression could cause developmental abnormalities, including clubbed feet and a flattened nose. And this consequence of events is known as the Potter sequence. In addition to this, Pulmonary hyperplasia or underdeveloped lungs could occur as amniotic fluid is required to um, keep the lungs open during development and therefore when the baby is born there could be respiratory insufficiencies which is actually fatal. So the complications of ARPKD is that uh, it could happen or it could result in congenital hepatic fibrosis which would cause portal hypertension and as a result lead to oesophageal viruses and upper GI bleeds as well as hemorrhoids and splenomegaly. At the same time um, the cholangiocytes or the sites or the cells that line the bile ducts um, also contain primary cilia so a mutation in PKHD1 would mean that expression of this protein is not present so the ducts might be dilated and this could, this could result in the formation of uh, gallstones as well as causing an ascending cholangitis from the dilated common bile duct allowing the bacteria to travel upwards uh, more easily. So in terms of the clinical examination and history, a family history is really important to look for any symptoms of ADPKD but also uh, of end-stage renal disease and other um, cerebrovascular symptoms as well that might point to ADPKD. The common presenting symptoms are flank or abdominal pain, renal colic, gross hematuria and less commonly headaches. So it's very important you get these symptoms in the history. Cystitis could occur in 50 to 75% of PKD patients and those symptoms are dysuria, urgency and suprapubic pain. UTIs could occur um, and these are their symptoms. So these are some things to look out for when speaking to the patient. On examination, because the cysts cause the kidneys to be larger than normal, 
you might notice a palpable renal or hepatic mass due to cysts in, in, re, in the um, kidneys or liver. Hypertension is common and could occur at a young age. There might be signs of ESRD, end-stage renal disease and cardiac murmurs might be present due to its effects on the vasculature. So tips for us keys would be to remember, remember to ask about family history, especially any symptoms that don't seem related to the UG system. Um, remember to ask for specific symptoms and look out for any other systemic manifestations. So in summary, here are some questions for you to do. So the answer in, to the first question is ADPKD because ADPKD is the one that presents in adulthood. In ADPKD, there are mutations in the PKD1 or PKD2 genes and they express uh, the proteins polycystin 1 and polycystin 2. So it's actually ADPKD that's associated with mitral valve prolapse. This is also um, the type of kidney disease that has uh, complications with regards to the liver, the seminal vesicles, the pancreas and vasculature. And that's it. Thank you guys.